Okay, so I'm here in the lab to show you just how easy it is to connect our GraySense uh, control gate technology to an Allen Bradley PLC. Um, and to do this demonstration, I'm going to use a couple of our vibration and temperature sensors. Uh, these are devices that we would put on a motor or a pump or any sort of rotating equipment to uh, capture rotating energy and detect failures in things like bearings, um, shaft alignment, that sort of thing. Um, and I'll also use uh, one of our control gates. So this is a panel mount node um, that has a couple of antennas on the front. One is our local 2.4 gigahertz uh, antenna, which is designed to capture uh, signals from our vibration and temperature sensors. Um, and the other antenna here is to facilitate our Wi-Fi connection, uh, which is going to take data from those sensors and push it up to the cloud. Um, on the back side of this device is our it's just standard Ethernet port. And this is what we use to uh, connect that sensor data to uh, the control network and eventually get data into your PLC. So um, uh, to walk through this, uh, again, this is just a generic overview um, of how the system works, right? We have sensors that then send data to uh, one of our control gates in this case. That data is just like a standard IoT system pushed up to the cloud and is thus accessible through our standard web and mobile application suite. Uh, we call that our maintenance hub. Um, on the other side of the equation, though, we've now added a just a standard Ethernet connection um, to uh, our control system here here in the building. Um, and so over Ethernet IP, we can take that same data, uh, both from a configuration perspective as well as a data perspective, and push that into uh, the control system and ultimately uh, to the PLC. All right. So how do we do this? Well. Uh, the first step is here in our maintenance hub. So this is at the cloud level uh, where we have all the tools available to configure easily uh, a system of nodes. So imagine you're just walking into a new order here. Um, this order has a very simple setup. We've got one control gate, this is this first part number, um, as well as two vibration nodes. Um, and I guess the first step here would be to just rename um, some of this. So let's say we want to call uh, this particular device um, or set of devices, uh, RA52 blower, right? So we're going to use these to monitor uh, the rotational energy on, on, a, on a blower system. Um, I'm then going to rename uh, my control gate to something like panel B control gate. I'm going to rename um, my two vibration nodes to inboard bearing. And let's do outboard bearing, okay? Um, and then uh, there's a whole slew of configurations you can do very easily. But let's say in this a particular application, we're only interested in capturing data once per hour. So I'm just quickly going to do that simplistic configuration. Um, and uh, we might as well match the control gate so that it is only going to report data once an hour as well. Um, and this gives us in our system roughly a three to five year battery life on our vibration nodes. Uh, so that's why I chose that. So that's step one. Uh, from there, we're going to bounce in uh, to our standard control gate configuration. And I'm going to, this is where I'm going to do the, the memory map creation for the control gate. So I'm just going to drag those two vibration nodes, which previously were unassigned, I'm going to assign them to the control gate um, uh, that we're using in this particular instance. Uh, so you see here on the left, I've now got a control gate with its own diagnostics channels, as well as um, two uh, vibration and temperature nodes, each of which are capturing surface temperature, um, a, a, slow, a slew of different vibration parameters, as well as um, just a handful of, of diagnostics uh, on, on themselves. So from there, we're going to export a couple of different files. Uh, the first is a standard memory map, um, and the second is an L5X file, which will give us the ability to, oops, to quickly and easily um, import this configuration that I just created into the PLC. So from there, I'm going to open up just really quick that uh, memory map that we talked about. So this is what a standard memory map will look like as output from our system. You can see that we've laid it out to handle both the Modbus TCP IP and the Ethernet IP cases. 
Um, and you know, all, all of these maps will look very similar where you have a system config at the top, um, and then configuration for each of the individual, um, uh, each of the individual nodes that are being configured. And then at the back end of the configuration will be the mapping between the actual data that's coming from those nodes um, to the, uh, the actual connection data inside of the Ethernet IP uh, device. All right. So um, the other file I just want to bring up very quickly is the... Um, the L5X file. Um, and this is what is going to get imported into your Studio 5000 environment. Um, so uh, this file, uh, it looks like this. It's basically an XML instantiation of the memory map that you just saw. Um, and at the bottom here, this is where we map our, um, our actual configuration data over into the PLC. So once we've got that information, that's really all we need to do our integration effort. So the steps here are going to be first and foremost, I'm going to create a new module for my control gate. So um, that at this point requires an EDS, um, our add-on profiles in development with Rockwell. Um, so that'll be forthcoming here in the next quarter. Um, but for now, uh, we need to use that EDS file to create uh, this device. Um, in this case, we're creating an Ethernet IP control gate. Um, and we're going to give that a name. Uh, with the serial number for that particular device. Okay, and uh, this will have been assigned an IP address um, already, so we're going to apply that here. Um, I'm going to enable all of the data connections um, for this particular device just to open up the entire memory map. And at that point, I've got my device configured. So the last step here is to come up and we're going to import that L5X file I just talked about. So um, I will find that in my downloads folder here. It's that blower that we just created. Um, Studio 5000 will bring up a quick little dialogue just to make sure that everything matches. We don't see any warnings here. So we're going to import. This will import a set of user-defined data types. Um, as well as a routine um, that is going to do the mapping between uh, that very, very customized memory map and your tags inside the Studio 5000 environment. So if we look at our local tags, eventually here, we've got tags for each of those three nodes I discussed, the control gate, and then the two uh, vibration sensors, right? So here's our, well, let me look at it this way. Here's our uh, configuration. Um, for that particular vibration sensor. And then you can see here the tags have been automatically generated for how that data is going to look uh, when, it, when it comes out of the device itself. Um, so the last step is uh, to take this routine and just call it from your main routine. Um, and that literally is all you would need to do to get this queued up on a PLC.